Hi friends, so welcome back to another segment in the course where we will now look into different cases, different real life problems where there is harmonic excitation um, occurring or where the system is subjected to harmonic excitation. So let's get started by talking about the first system of that kind. So today, the first case study with which we are going to take is that of a washing machine. So I think the, this we have seen before as well, but I will explain from first step itself. So we idealize the whole mechanical system as a mathematical model with springs and dampers. So here little m is the mass of the eccentricity or due created due to the non-uniform distribution of clothes within the washing machine and capital m is the total mass of the system it includes everything it includes the mass of the washing machine as well as the clothes now let's get started so you can pause the video for a while and you can um, go ahead yourself and frame the equation of motion which governs the system. So the whole strategy goes like this. Now we have eccentric mass, I mean uh, clothes which are distributed non-uniformly. Then we have the whole washing machine structure alone. So now I'm going to divide the whole structure into two parts. As you can see here, now I'm just isolating that or assuming that whole thing as uh, as a little m, little m at which is placed at a distance of r, and this whole thing is rotating at a velocity angular velocity of omega. And FH and FV are the reaction forces that, uh, that this point mass of eccentricity is experiencing. Now, I'm not worried about my equation of motion in the X direction because I have initially decided, it is quite obvious that's why I didn't tell earlier, uh, in, the, in this particular problem, this is a single degree of problem, uh, this is a single degree of vibration, degree of freedom problem and the single degree of freedom will be the displacement in the vertical direction which here i'm denoting the c with x so now um, once we start writing equation of motion for this particular portion of the body in the positive x direction then fv is acting in the positive x direction then mr omega square sin omega t is acting in the y direction it should be equal to m little m x double dot so this is the uh, eccentric mass once again or the mass of eccentricity whatever you call it this is not the total mass and this doesn't include uh, the structural mass of um, your washing machine so having seen the differential equation or uh, sorry having seen the equation of motion for the clothes alone now let's look at the structure of the washing machine alone now a few points to be noted now the whole mass is capital m minus m where we have reduced the mass of clothes from the capital m which is the total mass of the system and one more point i want to emphasize is here i have taken fv and fh in the opposite direction because you know reaction uh, and action they act in opposite directions so newton's third law so that's why i intentionally changed the direction of fv and fh so you can just come uh, rewind your video and see that fv was pointing upwards in when i considered the free body diagram for the clothes now i'm considering it as downwards now let's go ahead and write the equation of motion for this particular system now I have already written here so anyway so now this is the total mass times x double dot now if you sum up the forces this should be these two are acting in the negative direction so minus kx minus cx dot 
then again fb is actually acting here but we have a definite expression from the first case so we can substitute that particular relation to fv and finally we do a lot of mathematic not a lot of a few mathematical manipulations and then finally finally we here so i'm having a very difficult time in moving this i don't know i've written it here yeah finally this is the equation of motion for the system so this it was not complicated we could have written this in the uh, straight away but as i usually say um, this is a set of videos where we emphasize more on concepts so i went ahead step by step and showed you how we can reach at this particular relation so now let's go ahead and solve it one more thing before we go ahead and solve this we didn't consider weight of the clothes we didn't consider weight of the washing machine structure why is it so whole think on your own the reason is um, reason goes like this we are defining our coordinate system or our degree of freedom from the equilibrium position so this is our equilibrium position so if we are defining defining our little x from the equilibrium position then there is no need to explicitly include the weight or the forces static forces in the equation of motion and that way equation of motion gets further simplified okay so here i have shown you a set of equation that we have already derived here i'm showing you the differential equation which we solved and here is the response what we obtained i'm not going to write what all i'm not going to explicitly write what is delta static what is modulus of g of g of i omega all these things i hope you know by this time so this is the static deflection this is the magnitude of your frequency response also known as the magnification factor and this will capture or this will tell us how the response is varying with respect to time and how by what is the phase of the response with respect to your excitation so this is we have solved this now let's compare the differential equation what we have arrived at here so here this is the differential equation we have arrived at now we have told or we have established that this since there is a sin omega t variation here this particular excitation see this is the real life excitation so i'm just calling this i'm just modifying this particular differential equation like this mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to imaginary part of f0 e raised i omega t there is nothing wrong in it and because i am defining my f0 like this and we all know the imaginary part of e raised i omega t is nothing but sin omega t so this makes sense now this implies that the response or the answer for this particular question is the imaginary part or is the imaginary part of this particular response i have shown here so if i write it out again i will use the same color so that we know we are solving this particular problem here so the x of t will be delta static i'm just writing it so we have to express everything including delta static in terms of this particular system parameters see the system parameters are different for this system little m is the mass but in this system you have to be careful capital m is my mass and there f0 was just simply f0 but here i have a definite expression for f0 which is a function of the system parameters so all these things should be taken into account so going back uh, completing the equation which we started off this will be the response this will be the response 
now let's try to elaborate it now if we substitute for delta static or if we compute delta static which is a static deflection it will be the amplitude of your harmonic excitation divided by the spring stiffness in the system make sense once we substitute that then we can do some manipulations like multiplying both sides by capital m so that we can bring in the natural frequency because k divided by little m won't give you the natural frequency k divided by capital m will give me the natural frequency so i wanted to bring in that particular term here so i did the mathematical manipulation over here now finally i have an expression for the response see you have to appreciate one thing since we established the theory with complex exponential notations things are getting very simple if that was not there it would have been really complicated i hope you remember when we did the first example problem when we had to use a lot of trigonometric identities and all so just appreciate how well that complex and notations complex exponential notations are helping us in the process of finding out the response in practical situations now let's compare this with some equation like this where capital x sin omega t minus 5 correct then our capital x is or the amplitude is m m e divided by omega divided by omega and whole square times the magnitude of our or the absolute value of our frequency response now engineers always love dimensionless numbers and since this being a case of harmonic excitation we want to actually know how this particular variable how this variable will vary with respect to my omega or the frequency or the forcing frequency now so one by one so first we need to establish a non dimensionless parameter so the non dimensionless parameter will be capital m times capital x which is the amplitude of the response divided by little m multiplied with the eccentricity value will give us omega divided by omega and whole square modulus of g of i omega so this quantity is of our interest now because how none of these things will vary with respect to frequency anymore but this term altogether will vary now um, here one thing i left off the phase definition remains the same uh, compared to the previous case where tan phi i will, I, will, i should not mess up mess it out so tan phi should be 2 zeta r divided by 1 minus r square where everything is known at this point of time the only thing we need to keep in mind is to compute the natural frequency we should always use the capital m okay now let's go ahead and see how this particular term will vary and how it will behave when i change the excitation frequency so this is how we uh, that this particular quantity this particular quantity which can be called as a magnification factor it cannot be called as a magnification factor but the quantity which tells a lot about how our amplitude will vary with respect to the forcing frequency is changing something like this so there are we have seen a similar curve in the past it was the frequency response of amplitude again against a harmonic excitation so in that case i have uh, if you don't remember this was the curve which we um, which we got a, for a case where there is um, there is simple harmonic excitation nothing else no rotating and balance so the curve started from zero the peaks were to the left of this line then the finally the amplitude was dying toward, towards zero now what happens if you have an un, um, rotating unbalance in the system the very important thing is that the response starts from zero 
the reason is pretty simple because in our case f0 the amplitude of the excitation force amplitude of the harmonic excitation force is defined like this now the moment you have a your omega equal to 0 then you don't have an excitation force so there is no way you can uh, see a displacement or um, or a response in your system so this makes sense then if you look at this closely now all the peaks are shifted to the right of this particular line initially for the first case they were to the left now they have shifted to the right and the third and the last point to be noted is this in the case where you were subjecting your system to a harmonic excitation without any rotating and balance as for higher values of omega by omega n your magnification factor or your response was coming down or approaching the value of zero but here as it is evident that it is approaching a value of unity it is not going to zero so these are a few points to be should be which should be taken into account